how important is hormone status here to in, in this discussion of building, maintaining muscle uh, strength and function as we age? You know, a number of questions got sent to me when I I put up a post saying I was doing an episode on sarcopenia. A number of people were interested in you know the changes that occur at a hormone level as someone ages and how this may affect their ability to actually build muscle and strength with the resistance training that they're doing. Yeah, that's a really good question. And we, I suppose, particularly for middle-aged men, we're now seeing a massive increase in the number of men looking at testosterone replacement therapy. Um, A host of strength athletes and actors in their 40s and 50s are now sort of... um, big component uh, proponents of it so there's definitely some case for things like particularly in the male the reduction in testosterone levels as we age and perhaps some of the receptors potentially becoming less sensitive to the circulating testosterone as well i'm not as aware of how that works in older females but there was a really interesting paper that came out this year from a um from Kat Katoka in sport medicine, looking at the plateau and muscle growth with resistance training and exploration of potential or possible mechanisms. So there definitely seems to be a host of things that the hormonal system are involved with that um, reflect anabolic activities that are downregulated and a host of catabolic processes that are, are in heart. So where in essence, that hormonal component is influenced or influences things. Um, So if we think of things like the amino acids, like leucine as an important stimulus of lots of things, we think of the mechanical stress that exercise like progressive resistance training comprises. Then you've got your different growth factors, be it insulin, growth factor one, testosterone, growth hormone, et cetera, that are important. Um, that then influence that whole cascade of protein synthesis and degradation and all the different molecules that have varying roles. And when you look at some of those studies, you look at the flow chart of all those interactions, it's super complicated. So the research is doing some work into those areas, um, are doing some amazing stuff. It's never been something I've gone into specifically, but the complexity in all those sort of interactions of diet, exercise, the growth factors, and then all those genetic aspects that stimulate um, synthesis or degradation and the relative interaction of those effects is still super complex and something we're just really scraping the surface of at the moment. So some really good research happening and talking to some of those experts would be really interesting to get an idea from their expertise where they see perhaps the most important factors being and having a better understanding of that, do we then have the capacity to have more effective hormonal treatments as we age? Because what ultimately is the most effective dosage for TRT for a 40 or 50-year-old man? We really don't know that. Also, what are then the potential risks of those therapies and what is that balance to strike? We know prostate cancer is related to testosterone progression. So If we see a big increase in 40 to 50-year-old men um, taking TRT, are we going to see something in the next 20 years of an increase in prostate cancer as just a potential? Like, I'm not sure at all if there will be any association, but men with prostate cancer get androgen deprivation therapy, which stops their testosterone production pretty much in its tracks to reduce the progression of their cancer. So if their testosterone is elevated in those middle to Um, younger, early adult years, are they potentially at increased risk of prostate cancer development? I'm not quite sure. So, and then even understanding these different interactions, can we then come up with alternative exercise approaches or dietary approaches that will better improve these outcomes for older adults? Um, It's great to see some changes in the sort of dietary recommendations for older people. So, A lot of associations are now suggesting between 1 to 1.5 grams of protein per kilogram of body mass per day. So for older people to maintain their muscle mass or to increase it. So 
that's substantially more than what some recommendations were just 10 years ago. And some also some evidence to suggest that some relative equal spacing of those protein dosages is important as well. So not just to have a dinner of like 300 grams of rump steak to get your daily protein requirement, like spreading that more equally across the day is important as well. Mm-hmm.